on this somewhat historic week as the Fed left some ambiguity all the way up until the moment of the event, gave us the 50 basis points, and stocks broke out, continuing an extended rebound. After a summer scare, we got an all-time high in the S&P 500, a green light on my risk radar, which had been a little stubborn because the NASDAQ was stuck and the beating heart of this bull market is actually beating a bit slowly. I'll get to that. A few really important things. One is that I thought that conversation with Michelle Gibley today about the path over the last couple months via the Japanese yen actually tells us a good bit, which is that it takes two to tango number one, but the biggest player still is always the U.S. economy. And when you trace the weakness in the economy back into the summer months, into July and into the general top for the NASDAQ, which then preceded a string of weak data that ended with a big miss in employment that sent us careening down in August. And the market at that point was pricing in 50 basis points for the Fed. And a lot of folks thought that was crazy. And it turns out the market was right. That's what we learned this week. And that tells us that this is about coming to the economy's side and looking to give it support. While the Fed calls it balanced risks, and while the Fed, as we did hear from Bowman today, has sounded probably a little bit too victorious, we still have a really uh, long ways to go because the economic data softened in such a way that got us here, and now we need to see it hopefully at best plateau or at best improve and hopefully at least to plateau. That's what you want to justify what happened in stocks. So let's talk about the beating heart here. I like where everything else is right now. Crypto didn't get a big enough bounce for the light to change. Bonds yellow, dollar yellow. The breakout in the S&P, that's your best looking chart. Now let's go to the NASDAQ. Watch how things deteriorate here the closer you get to the heart. The NASDAQ is still struggling to get above that previous high. One could argue this is still in that symmetrical triangle. I think I'm being generous actually with my green light on stocks. Now I'll go one level deeper. What matters the most within the NASDAQ? It's semiconductors. That's your beating heart that has carried us here, that has been able to drive the market higher even during great economic uncertainty of the last few months. And this chart is worse than the NASDAQ because it's even further away from its previous high. And that was the one thing I pointed out yesterday. There's a missing piece here that is the beating heart of the whole run, really, which is semiconductors, which is NVIDIA under 120. And until those things really start to firm up, boy, is that green light flimsy to me. Because ultimately, this, I think, is still the most important thing. I don't think the economic data, even when combined with the 50 basis point cut, are encouraging enough for us to uh, expect a market driven by other cyclical groups. Notice the Russell actually got stopped out at its previous high this week. If you look at what happened in bonds, there is something encouraging happening, which is that bear steepener in the last two days. The 10-year yield did bottom out alongside the two-year earlier in the week on Tuesday. We had a bear steepener through the Fed, which is an encouraging thing that's saying that they did really take a step here to help give the economy a little bit of a boost. But as I've said before, I'm a bit of a yield curve truther. And actually, because the Fed cut, the yield curve that really started to uninvert for the first time in a long time is the 10 year to the three month. And that's from Cam Harvey's original yield curve survey. It's when that starts to uninvert, the recession does get closer. I'm a bit of a truther when it comes to that because it's worked every time. Maybe it won't. I heard a lot this week about how things are going to be different this time. I hope they are, but we're going to need economic justification. Have a great week.